We're at our final conceptual model that brings everything together. We've talked about the throwing mechanics or the pitching mechanics involving the front arm, stretching the chest, pulling the back arm through. We've talked about the chest angle and the importance of that so that we can use both arms in a seesaw-like fashion. We've talked about how we can position the hips and by turning those shoulders back this way, create a wind of a spring, a coiling of a spring that can then uncoil. Now we've got the pole vaulter's pole. We can use our body to snap like this pole vaulter's pole. You can see by bending it like this, there's a lot of tension in this pole. If I hold it right here and let go, it wants to snap that ball into the air. We can create the same thing. And when I talk about chest angle being the building block, the pole vaulter's pole position or the limbo position, as I also describe it, is the easiest to achieve the chest angle we want. So this position starts looking like this. My hips are wound, my arms back so that I've got the spring coil wound, the chest angle's up, uh, my left arm's up ready to start the seesaw, but look at this hip. I'm stretching the hip flexors. There's a group of three muscles that wrap right over the pocket area of your shorts or a skirt right in this area here that when you press the bone structure out against it, it stretches them like rubber bands. These are muscles we use to lift our legs in the air, but they can also be used to snap the upper body and snap that energy up this way. Again, very similar to a pole vaulter's pole. So my preferred method of hitting the serve, the technique for hitting the serve involves a very round front side where the dynamics of the pole vaulter's pole can be incorporated and we put it all together to achieve maximum MPH. One of the key things about really getting a powerful serve is transferring energy and that means it needs to stop in one place to move on up to another place. Now when we use this pole vaulter's pole with this launcher here, it tends to not really release too well because there's not really a stop point. You see it just wants to go right on over. And players tend to do that a lot. They, they go up and they try to snap using this technique, but then they go right on over. So here's where the cylinder gets built back into the full motion. What we want to try to do is snap up and drive that energy up to contact. And when we get to straight, boom, the, the pole's done working. This is diminishing returns when it starts going over the top and down. So is your body to be heading down this way. So we want to be able to come up and catch the weight, finish tall, finish high, and that energy will translate all the way up to the racket head for a nice big serve. So you'll see, if I put my hand here and I create a stop point with this, and I launch it this way, but the important part is, is that I give it that stop, like our body's going to do this way. This thing will just take off and go about five quarts down. You watch. Ready? Paul, look out! Oh! <laughs> it hit a racket. Sorry. So you can see, when I put the energy into that and then stop it quickly, it all shot up to the top and snapped the release like cracking the whip. And that's what we have to learn to do to really get top racket head speed and top miles per hour. Upward pitching motion, the seesaw, the spring wind, and the pole vaulter's pole. Those power sources are all available to you to build into your motion. Now let's go back through the 12 points and see how we can integrate those models into the motion and how the various technique styles work slightly differently from each other. <laughs>